Well, hello there. Jackie Holland here with Whosoever Will Outreach Ministries Church. Just greeting you with the love of the Lord and praying that all is well with you and you're doing fine. Generally, for my own self, I like to read a Proverbs at least a day. I just do it over and over. There's 31, so if the months are 31, you've got one a day. Some months are a little shorter, so you just double up. No big deal. If you miss one, you go back. It's okay. You're not under the law, but it's it, it's encouraging. And a Proverbs is a book of wisdom. Today, in 26 of Proverbs, it says, Like snow in the summer or rain in the harvest, Honor is not fitting for a fool, like a flattering sparrow or a darting swallow, and undeserved curse does not come to rest. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the donkey, and a rod for the backs of fools. Don't answer a fool according to his folly, or you yourself will be just like him. <laughs> a, yet answer a fool according to his folly, or you'll be like him in his own eyes. Sending a message by the hands of a fool is like cutting off one's feet or drinking poison. You have to really think about this. It's deep stuff, right? Like the useless legs of one who is lame is a proverb in the mouth of a fool. And what this is really saying is don't cast your pearls before swine. When you're honoring people that do foolish things and you know it's foolish and you know it's ungodly, don't, don't give them honor. Don't tell them. Oh, great, great job, when you know it's wrong. Try to restrain yourself. Well, it's hard because sometimes your position and your calling puts you in that kind of situation. But it, it just, it's, it's like wisdom in the hands of in the, to a fool. All it does is build them up and it makes you look foolish. Like a thorn bush in a drunkard's hand is a proverb in the mouth of a fool. Like an archer who, whose wounds it's random is one who hires a fool or a passerby as a dog. This has always got me, as a dog returns to his vomit. So fools repeat their folly. Do you see a person wise in their own eyes? There's no, no hope for that fool. As the slugger says, there's a, there's a line in the road. There's a fierce line roaming the streets. As a door turns on its hinges and a sluggard turns on his bed a sluggard a lazy person buries his hand in the dish he's too lazy to bring it back to his mouth a sluggard a lazy person is wiser in his own eyes than seven people who answer discreetly <laughs> oh boy that's something in it this book's talk today's chapter talk about foolish things and foolish people and people who know the lord are wise, but they are ever learning. They need to learn. We all need to learn. You've never outgrown God. You've never studied so much that you can explain every little thing. The beauty of the Word of God is that you can literally open it up and it's life and health and truth when your whole world is falling apart. The Lord has taken many of us on some very hard journeys. I've been on a hard journey my own self. One of the things that I heard this week from someone who is going through a hard thing, who's watched my life, someone close to me, my very own son, he's seen me struggle. He, he's never really understood why I, when I stepped out in ministry and uh, didn't do it as a paying job I used to get a paying job, but at that time, the elders asked me to give up outreach ministry and only, only do one job. So, I mean, that was their prerogative. And I felt like the Lord said, no, you can do both. And so I knew that was going to be a costly mission. And so I stepped out in faith. Of course, it's been costly. I only had one little paying job after that. It was for a, a year, and that was a blessing. And I started a food ministry for the Wisdom Center and an outreach for seniors. That was wonderful. I love that, but that ended. And then a, a foolish man shared with me, a foolish man and his wife, that he had, was opening this great church in Louisville, Texas, and uh, he was gonna give me this giant ministry and blah, 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 and do all these pro wonderful things. And 
it all seemed right, but it was almost too good to be true. You ever had something that's almost too good to be true? Anyway, it turned out that within a couple of weeks, he FBI picked him up and he had gone back to prison. I don't know if he's out yet. That's been about 20 years. So for about 20 years or something, I've gone without regular paychecks and I've trusted the Lord. My son has watched that. He's wondered why. He's seen me write books and have four different books and they're good books and, they're, and I give them away. I hardly ever sell them. When I do, I know it's just going back to the ministry. So I'm, it's not like it's gonna like, oh, I'm gonna go, uh, go somewhere on this. That $10 is gonna really get me, get me out there. No. <laughs> Uh, sometimes people like to, to buy things, buy, they like to purchase, they think more of it when they purchase. But for the most part, my books are given to people in jails and prisons and obviously not sold and people that are hurting that I feel compelled to do it. They could be, they could be wealthy, I could still give it, give my book as a gift. But he's watched and he's watched and me struggle and and live by faith and, and have a handful of ministry partners who send in uh, a regular gift. And uh, some of those have died along the way and, and God would raise up somebody else. That's what he will do, you know, if you're really in, in his will. But for some people, he doesn't allow us to go through real easy things because he's shaping and honing us for something. And I'm, I'm sure as our seasons are changing and the world is changing, the whole money system is changing. If you do not have faith, if you do, cannot live by faith, if you are trusting in your almighty dollar, you're not going to make it. You've got to trust in God. Then he can use that almighty dollar and get it into, into your hands so you can pay your bills. But, uh, but the point I'm coming to is this. In conversation, my son being very ill with Crohn's disease, colitis, and he was cellulitis, just got out of the hospital. It's, it's been hard. The bandages himself were probably $50 a day, just trying to take care of things. <laughs> but God, God is good. God provides, doesn't he? But words came out of his mouth when he was so, he's, he's so sick. And um, I kind of thought, you know, point of death. He said, I've never understood why anybody would not want to pay preachers good. They're the most important people out there. They do the greatest work out there, helping the people. And they should get paid good. He wasn't saying that for my benefit. He was saying that because he believed that. And I guess I've always had, I've come from that old school thing where, first of all, grew up in the country in East Texas and we struggled, but we loved Jesus. But, uh, you know, back in, in my younger days, preachers got paid chickens and pigs and eggs sometimes instead of money. It's not like that in the, in the days. They've got people, some of the richest people, if you pull them up online, some of the richest ministries, if you don't believe it, pull it up online. You'll be shocked at the, at the money. Well, you can be mad about it or glad about it, but it doesn't really matter. If they've, they've, they've sold books, and maybe they've used it through the church and, and used their, uh, you know, whatever. I, is that our issue? Is that our problem? You know what, I'm responsible for what God gives me, and he gives me enough, and he'll give you enough. And I just want to encourage you today, if you're in trusting God for your daily bread, if we remember the Lord's Prayer, He said, give us this day our daily bread. And what does that have to do with all this foolishness? It's as if, you know, when a, when a person knows to do good and doesn't do it, it's sin. When a person knows to do good, it's like a dog going back to the vomit when they go back and choose other ways of life to make a living or sell out their values and morals and everything else just to be in a position or get a certain paycheck. In my opinion, ministry is a beautiful thing. And I'm not sorry that I chose this road. 
but it's a hard road and God blesses me. But it's so funny, even though I'm 77 and was diagnosed with cancer 10 years ago, I'm still alive. And I was just praying, Lord, if you want me to open up a little church facility, just maybe something where people meet and have coffee and just talk about Jesus, give their testimonies. That's great, because my ministry is for whosoever. You're a whosoever. I'm a whosoever. You may attend a big church. You may not attend church at all. But there's a lot of people who would like to be in attendance to the house of the Lord, but they don't feel welcome or, or qualified. And that's not the way it is. I think I need to go back to what God how he brought me, and this is the way it was. When I first started doing ministry, I was walking around, my hair fixed and makeup and everything, I and mean, I didn't look like a grungy beggar begging people for food so I could do my ministry and help people that needed food. I've never thought you had to look poor in order to... Uh, now I just don't think you should be... I just think you should be who you are. That's what I think. And this morning... I just felt like, you know what, I'm going to put my pretty earrings on and I'm going to fix, start fixing myself up and dress a little better as I do my work and put on my jewelry. And I'm going to, you can't take anything with you. <laughs> you might as well enjoy what you got. Give it away if, you, if, it's, if it's in the way. Bless people love people, care for people. Be quick to respond and do good things for people who have needs. Be a blessing. The Lord said, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. My ministry is for whosoever's. It is for you. This is a church. We are designated as a church through the IRS. We've been, I've been doing ministry. This will go on our 36th year. And I don't know, I needed to hear my own son say, basically what the Bible says, a laborer is worthy of his hire. <laughs> and not feel ashamed to ask or just say, no, this is what we do. If you've been blessed, if you're blessed by anything that I'm doing or my life or my story, if you've read my books, Send an offering. We're ministry, church, just like anybody else. You can do it to whosoeverwill.tv or post office box 57, Sherman, Texas, 75091. But if you never give a penny, I'm okay with that. That's fine. I love you. I want to be a blessing to you. But I want to encourage you. Don't be like me thinking, oh, you got to, it's not, it's not good to look like you got very much because you don't want to like make anybody feel bad. You know what? Be who you are. That's the whole thing. If you if you wear rhinestones that look like diamonds the size of Elizabeth Taylor's, that's your business. If you drive a nice car and that's what you love and you're appreciating and you thank God for it, don't be ashamed of it. Don't think you got to run around. I better get me a little... little uh, beat up something or another. No. You bless the Lord at all times. Give praise to Him. And remember, foolish people are not going to understand you. They may be wise in their eyes or even in the world's eyes, but that doesn't mean they're wise. A wise person fears the Lord. Wisdom is the principal thing. If you do not know the Lord Jesus as your Savior, you can, you can come to know him. It's so wonderful. My life has never been the same. I want to spend my life mending broken people and end my days serving. I hope that I, I'm, hope I'm, I'm on my feet serving God and sharing the good news, going to the prisons, going to the jails, doing our ministries here doing our radio ministry with His Royal Diet or Diadem Radio. Just various things. Just do what you can do. Don't be 
worried about what people think. Oh, Lord, the main thing, you can't take anything with you. So choose who you're going to serve on this earth. Is it God? The devil? The word of God is true. It's life. It's health to your very being. Mm -mm. God is love. Let's pray and ask Jesus to come into your heart or to get right with God if you're away from the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and my only hope of a home in heaven. I know you said if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, I would be saved. Forgive me, Lord, of my sins. Write my name down in your book of life. I want to spend eternity with you and I want to spend my life being a blessing and I don't want to be a man pleaser. I don't want to be a fool pleaser. I just want to be wise in your in your ways, which is he that wins souls is wise. Do you know that? He that wins souls is wise. I'm blessed to share the gospel with many people. And I pray I've been a shining light I want to be until the day I drop dead. You want that? Let me know how you're doing, what's going on. We're on YouTube. If you see us on Facebook or YouTube, I'd love it when you subscribe or share. It means a lot to me. I just know this is the day that the Lord has made it. He will, we will rejoice and be glad. And the Lord does say, whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord, will be saved. God bless you. Jackie Holland here, Sherman, Texas. Whosoever will, Outreach Ministries. And we are a church. God bless you.